Okay. All right. Now we're ready to go live here. Um, and then we'll just snap leave there. That's all this. Okay. Oh. All right. Well, thank you for joining me <laughs> on this call tonight. So I've really felt called to connecting and hold space for the mamas <laughs> because I just feel collectively that we are really holding a lot of space right now for our children um, and for ourselves. And, you know, for me as, you know, as a kinesiologist, as an emotional freedom technique practitioner, um, you know, the clients that I work with really are the women who are um, trying to do it all and feel deep down that they're not doing it <laughs> the best. They seem, we sort of seem to be, feel as though we're failing in all different areas of our lives. And that stress can really take a toll. And not only does it become very depleting, it also allows that mental talk that we have in our head that really tries to drown out all the, the good that we tend to do. And so we tend to really, um, yeah, doubt ourselves, <laughs> put ourselves um, constantly in um, comparison mode as well. And we almost feel as though everyone else seems to have their this shit all together um, and why don't we and then you know often the women that I'm working with and myself we're hitting into our fourth decade so suddenly um, you know things start to change and this really is this powerful period as we start to transition into perimenopause um, into menopause, which I feel is a really powerful time, even though society and media programming probably wants to tell us a different story, but it's a very sacred and powerful time for women to be stepping into. But what tends to happen, this is the time when we start to notice if we've been pushing ourselves too hard, if we have been burning the candle at both ends, so to speak, we will start to notice that now. And so we'll have a host of hormonal issues, um, energy levels, weight fluctuations, and all the, the wonderful things that come along with it. And so it's really important that we start to pull back and bring us back into ourselves and to go, well, that there can be a lot of despair that comes up. Um, and there's a lot of feelings that come up with this because we realize as we're getting older and our children are getting older, our own... I guess in a child, particularly as we see our children progress, our past selves really can get, you know, triggered, so to speak, because we're trying to do all the things for them, hold space for them, be the most amazing woman, mother, lover, all the things. Um, but deep inside of us, we have the, those past selves that sort of saying, but what about me? Um, I, I want and I need some of that love and attention too. And so this really is an opportunity just to help provide um, the, the practice and the tools that we can be using to really help uh, support ourselves through this is that we need to, I often talk about flipping the mirror, but we need to ensure that we are able to recognize that the external is a just lessons or opportunities or what I like to call taps on the shoulder <laughs> uh, for us to reflect within and so there is this process uh, that I would like to just bring to our mind I often talk about through the process of compassion for self having acceptance of our circumstances but importantly also having a sense of detachment because whenever life presents us this, that comes up to us in that moment, all, automatically we sort of snap into response, but we end up reacting in a way because often our head just sort of goes ahead to, we need to do this now because it means X, Y, Z down the track. And so my aim is to help us have tools and cultivate the virtue of detachment to help us sit and recognize 
and to notice and observe what's actually going on around us. So we're not constantly in this reactionary, you know, fight, flight, stress mode. Uh, we can actually stop and take a pause and actually think. So there's the saying, when emotions are high, intelligence is low. <laughs> and so basically, you know, the limbic system, the emotional center of the brain, that's the one that's running on, on edge. That's the one that's trying to lead the show. And so what we want to be able to do is, you know, recognize and be thankful and grateful for those senses, but be able to take a step back and go, okay, well, let me think more logically, analytically about this, but also allow me to tap into my heart center into the intuition and to really allow me to hold space for myself and to really recognize what's actually true. Because often there's quite a few uh, stories we, we, we like to tell ourselves um, inadvertently. And so being able to create and curate this space is the goal. And so what I'll do is I'm going to share with you, this is um, the virtue of detachment. And so this is part of the virtues project, which is, uh, a, a woman, Linda, someone, I don't know her last name, but she and a few others, they went together and went through all the different religious and spiritual texts um, that, you know, around the world. And they came up with around 100 vir virtues. So they all had similar contexts, similar words, similar um, stories and parables. And they were sort of nailed it down to these 100 virtues. And so detachment they say is detachment is experiencing our feelings without allowing them to control us. We step back and look at things objectively. We let go and accept what we cannot change. We detach from others' choices, knowing that their spiritual work is not ours to do. We choose how we will act rather than just reacting. We step away from harmful cravings. Detachment is a deep breath of peace and patience in response to unexpected anger. We can listen without losing ourselves. With detachment, we see our mistakes honestly, make amends and start afresh. Detachment allows us to be in the world but not of it. It frees us to lead our lives with grace. And so I really love um, the concept and practicing detachment because it just, as I said before, it creates the space in between and we can become the observer. So we no longer absorb what's going on around us. We can just hold that container and it also allows us as I mentioned before taking that step back and we become the observer and we start to notice what it is that we are feeling because often we'll notice you know I'm feeling angry I'm feeling sad but even just changing a bit of the uh the language around that and saying I notice I'm feeling angry I notice I'm feeling sad it actually allows us again to create more space in between us and it's from there, the more we're able to cultivate that, the easier it is for us to then go, great, I now, what is it that I actually need in this present moment? And so what I'm just going to invite you to do, understanding now that process of detachment, what is something that's coming up for you right now that you feel that you need to detach from? And to have a think about what's sort of coming up for you that you want to be able to release and let go. And so if you just like to take a moment to have a think about that, writing that down and, you know, self-reflection, having a journal is a really beautiful practice just to help getting it out of the head and onto some paper, because again, that's yet another tool to help create distance and it stops it swarming around in the mind as well. So just give you a moment to do that.
And if you'd like to share in the chat box, you can do that as well. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. There are others people decisions that affect me that I have no control over. Yeah. That's a really big one and a great one to work on <laughs> the process of detachment. Oof. Especially um when it's mentioned with the with kids in schools. And any other sort of activities that they're doing and even, you know, even depending on the age as well, you know, sometimes when they're younger, it's a little bit easier to to have some sense of control. But then as they're getting older, um, then you, that sphere of influence starts to change and it's looking at, yeah, where else they get their information from, from media, from friends as well and stuff like that. And in their own, um, the, the friend's, parents and family upbringings and all that type of sphere too so it's really challenging and I know there's a uh book is it hold on to your kids from Gordon Dr Gordon Newfield and so he talks a lot about um this peer orientation and so why it's really important to have the strong foundations um as the family um when they're younger to ensure that, you know, as they get to those years, that they're still orienting around the family unit versus those who haven't had such a strong family connection when they were younger may start to then orient around their peers instead. And so it's really just ensuring like us, what's our solid values and foundations as a family and just really being able to pick and choose um, those big ones and have that as a culture in the family and really ensuring that they're able to, you know, you can share that and having um, yeah, deep connections and how to maintain that, which is, you know, easier said than done. <laughs> we know this, but it, it's so big. It feels really big. So, yes, thank you. Um, and I know from the people that have shared as well, um, the sense of just feeling overwhelmed with, yeah, the very big, um, yeah, the big, the bigness, the responsibility <laughs> of raising children. And so, you know, there's two levels of that. We have the day-to-day -day runnings around, um, you know, and all the different hats that we tend to wear and, you know, switching from, from mother to, to wife, to, um, you know, colleague or business owner, to sister, to daughter and all the different things. Um, but then we also have the role of, uh, like, who are we within all of this? Um, and sort of realizing that, wow, that's a really big responsibility. It's a very big duty that rests on our shoulders being responsible, not only physically, but, you know, emotionally and mentally and spiritually developing our children with those you know, strong values to be able to be their own person, to, well, their own 
men and women, you know, as they grow older, um, who can, who are critical thinkers, who, you know, who are happy and who are successful, but in their own ways and ensuring that they're able to have the resilience and the capability to respond, you know, into the world. And, you know, we, what's really one means wonderful that we have so much information of late about just how, um, you know, all the psychology, all the latest research and all these things, but it's also very daunting as well because there is so much information. We sort of know, you know, just how important this is too. And so it's like yet another thing that goes on that we need to do. Um, and so our aim is to just be able to pull that back and get deeper and having a, a sense of, of self and a sense of self-assurance in who we are and what it is that we're here for. And we almost just need to pair it all back because it is very overwhelming. Life is very overwhelming. Social media is very, very overwhelming. Um, you know, I know for, you know, the whole concept of creating content and allowing people to learn and evolve. And for me personally, like I love education. That's just my knowledge thing. I want to know every little thing about it, understand it completely so I can help others. Um, but again, at the end of the day, we need to be able to pull back and realize that we are just a human being living in this existence as well. And that is okay just to pair it back to the basics. And yes, there can be all the evidence-based research for whatever it is, but we really are just living life. And how can we bring it back to the basics? So what my intention is now is just to help to transition now. It, like I said, there's a few steps that you can be taking. So first is this concept of self-reflection, taking some time to just, when you're noticing all the things in the head, is to write things down, get it out, notice what it is that you're feeling. And it can even start with, I notice that I'm feeling X, Y, Z right now. Get it out of the head <laughs> so we can drop back, back into the body because there is a lot of disconnection. Our minds are full, but we're not mindful, <laughs> but the minds are really full with all the different stuff that's going on and so being able to drop back into our body and so what you know probably hearing a lot of the concept of embodiment practices helps us get more in tune with that and so I talk about the three brains the heart being um, the seat of the intuition we have the brain which is the intellect but then also our gut instinct but the heart is is the master this is where the true self resides and the mind really needs to act as the faithful servant and instead currently now it's sort of overriding things. What we really want to do is just to help reset that process. So we can, instead of reacting constantly from the head, we can actually drop into the body, create that space, create that sense of safety and understand who it is that we truly are. And it's through our intuition that will help guide us, you know, and that, that intuition and whatever you want to call that, whether that's, you know, connection to God, to spirit, that divine, the Holy, the Holy spirit, your higher self, you get comfortable with terminology that works well for you. Um, but this is, this is where it's at because from here we can get that sense of peace and literally from the heart, we have the coherence and the energy and the frequency of the heart. And this is where we have that beautiful, of love, of compassion, of understanding. And it is that unconditional love. And it's that beautiful energy that we want to be able to draw upon. And it is something that is actually very filling and fueling. And it's actually always there. We just need to be able to remind ourselves how to get back into that state because it, it's infinite. It's not finite, it's infinite. Our, we are well-resourced. Again, it's coming back to ourselves and trusting ourselves and really being able to recognize the truth of the scenario as well. And they can be very big and very confronting, um, but step by step, and the more you can practice little bit by little bit, the easier it gets. And it allows us to move, as I call about that spiral of ascension. We can just come back to ourselves and just keep evolving, keep moving, keep shifting. So the same old stuff doesn't keep coming up for us. So we'll move into this portion now of using the tapping. So that's emotional freedom technique, also known as EFT or tapping. Um, 
And what I love about this is that it helps combine a few of those different things. It gets us out of the head and into the body. It's an embodiment practice because we are literally using our fingertips to help us um, to touch on different acupressure points on the body. And so if you're familiar with acupuncture, you sort of know in traditional Chinese medicine, the concept of um, there's different elements, but different meridians, which are matched to different organs within our body. And so there are actually hundreds of meridians, um, meridian lines that run throughout the body, and there are different points along them. And they all have many different uh, processes and um, different benefits for depending on which one that you hold. So as a kinesiologist, we, you know, during a session with someone, that's what we're sort of using to help shift and move the energy or the chi um, throughout the body to help dissolve any um, stuckness, <laughs> to help dissolve um, any of the, the self-sabotage thoughts or the patterns that keep us stuck so that energy can flow back again throughout the body. And it targets on not only the physical, but the emotional, the mental, and the energetic as well. So it allows you to really click through all those different levels um, rather than having to, you know, go to all the different modalities and different practices. Acupressure is a wonderful one and that you can just do it yourself. So for me, learning emotional freedom technique, I was just like, oh, wow, uh -huh, this is the thing that can really help empower people because I'll show you and take you through the process and that, you know, I do videos, there's lots of free videos in YouTube, but once you sort of know, you can do it yourself anytime, anywhere. Um, and yeah, it's a, it's a lifesaver. I, you know, I'll do it when I'm driving, I'm doing all the, all the things when, you know, I'm in a conference, you know, or if I'm in a situation that's challenging, if I've got to prepare myself for a, a conversation or, uh, yeah, just prepare myself just for a, a scenario or, or going into meeting a new person. If I'm feeling nervous, you know, before presenting on here, I'm tapping. Um, yeah, just all the different things. I, you can use it anytime, anywhere. And so I think it's a really beautiful um, modality to have in your toolkit to, to, to help shift and change and move things through. So, you know, coming in and just noticing what it is that came up when you did your self-reflection, you sort of rate yourself out of 10. Well, what am I feeling right now? You sort of know, okay, if you're hitting that, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, okay, what we really want to try and do is at the end of it, you can re-rate yourself and see how you feel afterwards. Um, but with tapping, basically, I will guide us through a process, but you know, for you to use in the everyday, you might find that there's one point that you'll use um, and just, just use that. You don't have to worry about what kind of wording. You just notice what you're feeling and just sort of tap on that and just go, look, I notice I'm feeling this right now and just sort of tune into that emotion. And it also allows us to move into the emotion rather than us trying to run away because we don't like it when we're feeling stressed, overwhelmed, angry, because we sort of know we've, it's very hard for us to contain. When we're disconnected, we don't want to feel because we think it's going to be too much. And just imagining, you know, we've got in our metaphorical emotional backpack, we've got years and years and years of, you know, all the ways our little inner child and past selves just want to scream, stamp, you know, get it all out. But we sort of contain ourselves, contain ourselves. And so we want to be able to get to a stage where we can safely pull those little things out and allow them to have their time, their moment. And that can be when we're tapping. I notice I'm angry, you know, let it all go out. The frustration, what you really want to say to someone <laughs> then and there, but you won't, but at least you're sort of getting it up and purging it out to allow it just to shift, change, transform and move on. So we can. Um, yeah, that's what the tapping will allow us to do and to get you through those moments so you can safely get to where it is that you need to go and then you know when you're ready to go for bed and when you're feeling the urge for wine o'clock, perhaps it might be time to do some tapping and see how that goes as another way to get through. Okay, so uh, I just invite you now just to, you know, get comfortable in your chair. Um, what we'll do is probably do the tapping process and then I'll likely lead us through and just into a bit of a like a, just a guided meditation visualization just to help anchor us back into the process because um, 
I like to just anchor us back into the what I call the heart frequency as well because it's from this state really. It's like when you take that big sigh, breath of release, you're just like, oh, gosh, I feel really good. It just helps to reset. And the more we're able to do these types of things, the easier it gets because we're reminding the body, this is what feels good. More of this, please. More of this, please. Okay. Um, and then if you're just new to tapping, we usually start off here on the side of hand. And then I will guide us through, uh, it is corner of eyebrow, corner of eye, under the eye, under nose, on the chin, the collarbone points, just under the arm. And so you're giving yourself a cuddle there and then on top of the head. And so we just cycle through these, just go at a pace that's comfortable for you. Um, if I'm saying a word that doesn't really match, feel free to free form it in your own mind, go down a different path if you'd like to as well, but um, yeah, follow along and see how you go. Okay. All right. Um... We'll just start on the side of hand here now. And just take a deep breath in through the nose. And we'll just hold for a count of four, three, two, one, and ah, let that all go. And just, just don't discount the power of a deep breath. It's ours, you know, it's free. You can do it at any moment, any time intentionally slowing down our breath is a very beautiful and powerful way to help reset and get us out of the stress response and into the parasympathetic, the rest and digest phase. And so we'll do that one more time. Big deep breath in through the nose. Pause for a count of four, three, two, one, and um, I'll let that out. With a loud exhalation, you know, opening up those vocal cords, just allowing our voices to be heard. Mm. Okay, and we'll just do one more deep breath in through the nose. Hold for a count of four, three, two, one, and ah, letting it all go and just being here now in the present moment. And just keep breathing at a nice, slow and intentional pace for you. You might notice you need to yawn. Go ahead and do that. You might see me yawning. That's how I sort of tend to shift energy for myself. So all right. now I'm going to say some um, statements. Feel free. You can repeat after me or just sort of repeat them in your mind. You can just sit and listen and observe. That's completely fine as well. So just do whatever you're comfortable with. It's just going to get us to tap on the other hand as well, on the other side of hand now. <sighs> so even though I feel really overwhelmed right now, even though there seems to be so much pressure, so much going on, even though I find it really hard to think I can change. I know that it's all going to be okay. Even though I'm so worried about all the external influences happening over my family. Even though it makes me feel really angry, really unsettled, makes me really concerned about the state of the future. Even though I'm worried that I'm not doing enough. I acknowledge 
that I'm doing the absolute best that I can. And it's time to cut myself some slack. Even though I feel very frustrated, like there's never enough time for myself, even though I feel like I've lost a sense of my own identity in amongst motherhood. And even though it makes me feel really guilty to even think that, I deeply and completely love, honour and accept myself anyway. Okay, so I'm just going to start tapping on the eyebrow point and just work our way around. Okay, so all this pain, all this frustration, all this fear, corner of eye, oh, I just feel so overwhelmed. Under eye. There's a lot of guilt, a lot of resentment, a lot of frustration in my body. It feels overwhelming at times. Under nose. All this pain, all this worry. I'm constantly on high alert. the chin. I never feel like I'm doing enough. There's never enough time. There's never enough energy. There's not enough knowledge. On the collarbone points. I feel as though I don't know enough. And I'm not good enough. And there's always a new curveball to be had. Mm -hmm. And to the arm. I'm constantly trying to juggle all the different needs and priorities in my life. Feels like it's way too much. And in amongst it all, I keep losing myself. Top of head. And it makes me so, so sad. It brings me a lot of grief. And also brings me a lot of guilt as well. Because I should be thankful and grateful for all that I have. Okay, tapping on the other eyebrow now, which I am. But it's also safe for me to recognize that it's hard and challenging too. Corner of eye is such a big responsibility and it's really scary. And it all comes down to me. Or it feels like it all comes down to me and I'm just carrying the right weight of the world on my shoulders. And dry. And it just feels heavy. I feel heavy. I can feel slow at times. It's hard for me to feel vital and energized to go throughout my days. Under nose. It can be hard at times 
for me to find the positivity and the energy. And I hate feeling like that. And the chin. And again, it makes me feel guilty and sad because I know it can be done in a different way. But it just seems so big and so overwhelming. I just don't know where to start. The collarbones. Point. Mm. And so I just keep reacting and responding to the world because at least I'm doing something. It makes me feel as though I'm doing something, even though I don't feel like I'm focusing on the right things. I'm sad to have lost a sense of my own self. Sometimes I just don't know what else to do. Tapping under the arm. Ah, I feel so lost. I don't know what to do. Feeling overwhelmed, feeling confused. Mm. I'm just tapping on top of the head. And my own inner self feels upset because I don't seem to be taking responsibility or showing myself the care that I actually need in life. And again, that also makes me sad. Having on eyebrow. I wish I could be fun and carefree. Everyone else seems to be able to get it together. Why not me? The corner of eye. I wish things were better. If you had anything specific, feel free to think about them now. What it is that you wish for. It just seems so hard or far away. We're just tapping under the eye. Recognizing any frustrations, any pain, any guilt, any overwhelm, any heaviness. Under the nose. Mm -hmm. Noticing any frustration, overwhelm, guilt on the chin. <sighs> just so over it all. Sometimes I just want, <laughs> I need a year long retreat <laughs> somewhere away where everyone can just look after me. I'm never nourished. I'm never nurtured. It's just one last thing to do. Why doesn't anyone look after me? On the collarbone. Ah, so that fills me with resentment. It fills me with anger and frustration at my partner if they're around, with my children. And it just festers inside and I don't know what to do to get rid of it. A lot of anger. And then a lot of shame and guilt around that. So tapping just under the arm and noticing that and feeling that there's never enough time for ourselves. We just want the world to stop <laughs> so we can just take a break. But then we feel guilty and then we try extra hard to make up for it. Top of head, just why can't it be so much easier? Noticing all the pain, the frustration, the resentment. Okay. All right. So now we're just going to take a hand on heart. Just take a deep breath right now, breathing in through the nose. Hold for a count of four, three, two, one, and just let that go. And so what we've just done now is what we call a purge cycle, just getting rid of all the stuff, the junk, the yuckiness, things that we just don't think is ever going to change. We've just tapped and 
we've given it some, we've shone some light on the darkness there, things that we hide away from, we're shining the light to go, hey, this is what's coming up and it's okay to be able to have these thoughts and our feelings. But what we're also going to do now is to help shift and transform. We're going to continue doing some tapping, but we're going to, what we want to do is lovingly integrate those thoughts and all those feelings for us because um, they're a part of us and all thoughts and feelings, they're valid. And I said, they just need to have some light of day. They need to have some loving, nurturing time. And this is our opportunity now to just shift and transform that. So when you're ready, we'll get started again. We'll start tapping on eyebrow point. Ah. Yeah, so recognizing this moment of change, recognizing all those thoughts and feelings that I have just being stuck in the mind and in the body. Corner of eye. Even though, even though I feel embarrassed or guilty, ashamed even about talking or thinking about those things. They're completely valid and that's okay. Under the eye. I'm recognizing them as just the tap on the shoulder to tell me that things need to change and that even though they feel scary, what they actually need is some loving, nurturing and nourishment. Those feelings need a space to be seen, heard and witnessed. Under the nose. And so this is an opportunity for me to hold space for myself because that's what I deeply crave, to be seen, heard and witnessed in all aspects of myself, the good and the so-called bad. And the chin. And so I am choosing to lovingly meet my shadow self. And I'm open to having a relationship with her because they are me. And I know the more I'm able to mother myself, that's the better mother I'll be able to show up and be in this world as well. My collarbone points. And so recognizing all that I shared before, I'm ready to let go and release all the things that are holding me back to all those old stories and feelings. Letting it all go. Any colors, sounds, shapes or symbols associated with them, letting them all go. <sighs> Any core belief systems, self-sabotage, actions, across my ancestral lineage, habits and core beliefs and self-sabotages from my generational patterns and history, just letting it all go now into unconditional love, releasing and letting go of any vow, contracts and agreements made that keep me in that stuck state across all time, space and dimensions, letting it go with unconditional love. Under the arm, I'm ready to transform and shift any of these so-called negative feelings. And I'm choosing to meet them with love. And I'm choosing to give myself the gift of grace during this process. Top of head. 
and choosing to learn how to practice the art of detachment. And to know how to lovingly disconnect the mind from being the master and to return to my heart space instead. Eyebrow point. To come back into my body, even though it feels really scary. But I know what my body needs is just some loving attention. The body holds the story, it keeps the score. And I'm ready and willing to meet with it now from a space of love and compassion and acceptance. Eyebrow point. And I know even though it can feel overwhelming, I'm choosing instead to meet it with love and grace. And it's okay to have these big feelings under the eye, even though it feels very overwhelming to sit with these feelings and to acknowledge them. I know it's just going to get easier and easier the more that I do. Under nose, I'm open and choosing to work with my body, with my heart space and with my intuition. That beautiful connection to the divine, <laughs> whatever you would like to call that, to your higher self. Under chin, that's where the true answers lie. Instead of looking out to the external all the time, I'm open to learning how to trust my true self. To trust the next course of action to take. To trust how I will respond into the world. Collarbone points. Because even though there are a lot of external influences, a lot of external information, there's just so much going on out in the world, I'm choosing to put a bit of distance, a bit of detachment into place now. And in that space, I'll be filling that up with my own true self, my own energetic frequency. I know that I'm capable. I know that there is a vision of the mother, but also the woman that I know that I am and can be. One who's filled with energy and vitality and sensuality and kindness and compassion and nurturing and loving, but also oh powerful within that. A woman who knows her sense of worth, a woman of honour, of courage, of truth and of love and who is more than capable for holding space for herself and her loved ones and her community around her to be that amazing source of strength and pillar of light. I have that deep knowing that that's available to me and I'm ready to seek her out and have a relationship with her and to embody her. Mm. Okay, under the arm now. Just letting go anything that's holding me back, letting go any stress, pain, worry, fears, letting that all go. And I'm calling in unconditional love, calling in courage, top of head. Ah, letting go what no longer serves me. 
and calling in peace, calling in love, calling in nourishment and nurturing of my own self. Okay, and I'm just going to invite you now to pop your hand over your heart, one over your belly. Just keep your eyes closed or just drop a soft gaze into your lap, whatever you're more comfortable with right now. And we'll take a deep breath in through the nose, holding for a count of four, three, two, one, and letting that go. And just noticing your body now, noticing what it's feeling, noticing what we've called in, noticing the slight maybe buzziness of feeling as we're literally rewiring and shifting and changing our perceptions, noticing the beat of your heart under your hand, noticing how it's beating literally moving blood, cells, new information all around the body right now. And just noticing with that beat of your heart, just imagine a colour now that's radiating from there. And allow that beautiful heart energy color just to slowly start to grow and expand around you, out from your chest, down towards your body to the tips of your toes, up to your head, and just allowing that beautiful color and energy to continue to expand around you. creating a beautiful, safe container, filling your aura and energetic bodies. With each breath in, just imagine that going deep and connecting in with your heart space, fueling and growing. And just connect right now into that energy. And ask yourself, what is it that you need to be to step into being the woman that you know you can be? What's one emotion or feeling that you might want to be able to bring with you to allow that to infuse into your body and have that as an anchor point after this practice. Just listen and notice comes up for you. And I also invite you to think about one thing that you are grateful for right now. It might be a thought, a memory, an emotion. Just think about something that actually brings you that gratitude and sense of joy. And again, allow that emotion to infuse this beautiful, energetic, safe, heart-centered space. Fill your body, fill the aura literally getting down into every single cell of your body, the heart pumping it all around.
this state of heart coherence, this energy is available to us at any time. And it's a reminder that we can live life from this state and this space. And just notice any shift in perceptions now. I start to guide you just back. Know that this space is available to you anytime, anywhere. You have an anchor word. You can always just bring your hand over your heart as a reminder to bring you back into this space. And as we do so, bringing awareness now back into our bodies, bringing in peace, bringing in ease. And just know that we can live life from this state. You just need to practice, <laughs> show up and practice. Give ourselves grace and kindness and understanding, just like we would do for a newborn child. Our invitation now is to be able to treat us with that same kindness as we start to rewire and show up in a different way to be the woman and the mother that we know that we absolutely can be. So now we'll take one last deep breath in through the nose. Hold for a count of four, three, two, one, and oh. just let that all go now. And when you're ready, I just invite you to open your eyes. <laughs> My mistake. <laughs> So let me know how you're feeling, but I hope you are feeling a little bit more at peace. And I also hope that you enjoyed that practice. I'm very glad to hear that. <laughs> and so it's just the invitation to pull upon and use some new tools um, and as I said, like you can listen to this again and again, <laughs> but have this, this is what, this is the medicine that's available to us. And we just need to be anchored in and reminded. And so I will wind up. So I don't want to be talking at you while everyone's in this nice relaxed state, but you do some self-reflection tonight, continue that on. What is it that I actually need? And we ask, keep asking ourselves, what is it that I need right now? What's a practice that I can do? We've got, you know, three deep breaths. You have some tapping and we have a word and anchor for you to just to remind you to get back into that beautiful heart coherent state. So I wish you a beautiful night, <laughs> a beautiful deep sleep, feeling of peace. Continue that. I will send out the recording um, shortly and with any other information that's there. But, yeah, if you've got any questions, comments, please feel free to reach out to me. But, yeah, wishing you a beautiful and wonderful night and thank you for journeying with me. See you.